is halftime at the, uh, this is the Putnam City North Stadium. I have Andy Irvin with me, who is going to be our halftime half guest, and he puts all the U-Vision stuff together and a whole lot of other things. But, Andy, this is your home territory, but this is a brand-new stadium. Yes, uh, I went to Putnam City High School, a 1988 graduate. When there was only the... No, okay. they, there were three schools back then. Okay. Um, I think Putnam West was built in the 60s. Or, well, or Steve Largent played. I mean, yeah, so they, were, yeah. they Steve, were around. Steve Largent uh, went to Putnam City as well. Um, Putnam North is the last school that they built, but it's still it's been around since, since the 70s. So it's been here for some time. But, yeah, Northwest Oklahoma City is where I'm from. This is my old stomping ground. Well, I, uh, I know you know your way around here. Hey, what about this first half? I mean, after what we've been through this year, this is amazing. This is what we're used to seeing, and it's funny because Putnam North kind of seems to be where we have been. You know, they've got a, a, a snap fumbled deep into their own territory that they had to fall on. Uh, we almost picked it up and scored on it. Uh, um, this feels more at home. We just got to get control of the little things. We're running into the kicker too many times. Yeah, uh, those kind of things still need to come together, but I know they've been trying to get the kids to buy into, hey, we can get from here and get there, and they're really doing that tonight, and that's not what I'm wanting to talk to you about. But <laughs> we can talk football is, if you want this to. Is, this is fun. Andy, we, uh, you know, it was a number of years ago, Justin Fuente's sophomore year, that I what went and bought time from a radio station, and Peck Clark and I, former TU coach, did union baseball or football on the radio and not there had not been a single school having all their games on for years mm -hmm. i mean way, maybe back to the 19 late 1940s and it bothered me because i would drive through texas and southern oklahoma on a friday night there's sports there's football on yep. everything and i thought you know if we could get that going then I know Broken Arrow would copy us, and I know that Jinx would, and probably Owasso eventually, and you never know who else. And so radio became a big deal, but now this live streaming is a big deal. On our week off that we had, uh, I watched Highland Park High School from Dallas mm -hmm. play because their, their quarterback, Chandler Morris, is our Arkansas head coach's son. And uh, Doak Walker is their running back, by the oh, way, wow. who is the grandson of the famous Doak mm -hmm. Walker. But I was able to watch the game, and with my phone, I could listen to the radio broadcast. So you, you've gotten us going in that. Tell us how all that came together at Union. Technology is amazing. It's funny that you bring that timeline in, because when Fuente was here, that was when I kind of first came to Tulsa. Um, and that was some of my first Union uh, teams that I followed when I was a sportscaster back at Channel 8. Uh, many years ago up, uh, but we'll just in the past four to five years we've grade. started live streaming and it's it's a slow process we're seeing what we can do where we can do it at you know you go to a visiting school and you may not have a way to get that that data um, to our server and, and, and online and so it's always today was a crazy setup because we thought we had network line and we didn't so we're we're streaming off of a, a, a my five but you know you, all you really need is one camera some smaller schools just use like an ipad and and send it from there, but it's as simple as for folks that are familiar with Facebook Live and things like that. That's really all it is. We do it to a higher level. Um, we like to do multiple cameras. When we're at home, we stream what we put on our Jumbotron, so we kind of kill two birds with one stone. We use our students. Um, our students are on the production crew, so they're getting to have hands-on of you know, probably around a million dollars worth of equipment um, and doing the Jumbotron and live streaming. So. Their parents can't come to the game. It's just like the players on the field, they can watch wherever they are. They've got grandparents across the country. Grandparents can watch. You've got grandparents can be living in Pennsylvania and watch the game. They can also hear it because we're, we're online, uh, online, obviously, with all the KR. Over in Europe, I know, I know there's a few former Union football players that watch every week over in, in Eastern Europe. Well, and that's amazing, and it's not just football. I, I announced, I'm a public address announcer for volleyball. We did all that, may, maybe all of the home deal, we did home, home matches. We did all the home volleyball matches this year. That was something new to us. Uh, we've and done we're doing soccer. Res wrestling this soccer year. Soccer is something we're adding this year. Where, where I want to get to maybe next year is we need to find funding to cable our baseball and softball fields so that we can live stream those games as well. I want to live stream as much as we can 
I know our athletic department is behind it, administration's behind it. Um, so if, if, if we can live stream as many sports as, as we can, I think that's, that's, that, that's good for mom and dad, grandma and grandpa seeing little Joey or, or, or little Jane right on the field the doing what they on. did. And this year for basketball, you're adding a play-by-play -play announcer. In other words, this is going to be just like turning it on TV and watching and, and we, hearing We've got announcer. a friend of the program that's, that's helping out. Uh, Brandon McCombs, um, he did, he's done soccer for us in the past. He's going to come and do uh, basketball. We want to get the program, my, my program at school, built up to where we can start having students do that. But I know we're a few years away from that. I just don't want to throw someone into that and, and have the production value go down. Uh, we want to be able to train them appropriately before we put them on the air. So uh, we'll get there. Broken Arrow did that with the student just a few years back, and he's now in Lawrence, Kansas, and has a talk show and everything, and it, you know, it worked out. And uh, you're training guys that are going to work can, right out of high school. Some Absolutely. Of it, uh, in, uh, in this field. I've had a whole bunch working at local TV stations. Um, I've got a, a former student right now, uh, Zach Roberts, who's a freelancer, uh, full-time freelancer for ESPN. So he's traveling week to week, going to whatever college game, pro game, uh, uh, whatever you, um, they need him for. So the union's got a great program yeah. students can come into and, and, and learn that. By the way, this, this is halftime at, uh, at uh, Putnam City. And uh, Putnam City West High School, Putnam Union City North, North, excuse me, <laughs> and uh, Union leads them by a score of 21 to nothing. A little bit surprising. And our guest at halftime is uh, Andy Irwin. Andy, first of all, people need to know you are the father of Nick Irwin, who graduated from Ladies. Union and is now at OU and was uh, just a, a really popular guy at school. And also, you are the husband of Leanne Taylor whose real last name is, is the same as yours, uh, uh, from Channel 6, and everybody knows her. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a family of a very important, very famous people. Uh, Nick uh, was a TP czar, and he wasn't a czar, but uh, he's, he's a legend on the TP crew. Um, and, and obviously, we had, uh, uh, she and I met at Channel 8 back in the 90s, and, and we've been married over 20 years now. So uh, I'm very blessed uh, to have a wonderful family. And also, uh, our, our oldest, Rachel, uh, is now 26. And, I forgot about and Rachel. she's a union graduate as well. She graduated 2010. Ra Nick graduated 2018. Um, so we are union through and through. Now, how do kids get involved in your program and how many hours a day do you, you teach this? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you something we did this year that's really exciting is we've merged my video production classes with our marketing classes. Jennifer Tich Fisher teaches those marketing classes because um, what we've been doing in the past is she's been using my students to shoot and edit for her um, with all the equipment that we have. Um, and so we've kind of merged those two programs and have a dynamic teaching environment. So she's able to um, add so much to the class as well. And that frees me up to go do more live streaming. But my students will have broadcasting students, we've got video production students, and we have marketing students that are all learning this big, huge core of information that they can take on to college uh, and, and, and even jobs uh, that, that they can well, get Well, and that, that's just an amazing thing for our kids because they actually are almost employable ready that you want them to go on to college, obviously, and I recommend that to everybody. You may want to own a station someday and be the general manager. You need your college degree, but they're able to get jobs, and you've had a number of uh, young people that worked the driller games and yep. uh, did the camera and some of those places. And So you have a lot of opportunities. You, you go out of your way to find opportunities for If them. If you're in education, it's all about the kids, and I'm so glad to see you. Uh, Mike Brown's um, story today in the Tulsa world that he did on the, on the live stream because, you know, we had uh, uh, our crew of seven uh, get, get mentioned and get pic uh, their picture taken in the Tulsa world this morning. Um, so uh, I was very appreciative of that article and uh, getting that information out there. Well, I just enjoy it like when I'm announcing volleyball and I can get the, the deal up on my phone. Now, there's a little bit of a delay, delay there, yeah. but just that people can do that. And, I you know, I would announce at the beginning volleyball, hey, uh, call grandma and grandpa if they're in another state or something. Tell them they can watch it tonight, and it's very easy. Well, I want to get this story in before we have yeah. to go. One of my favorite stories about you, Doc, is when I played basketball for Putnam City High School back in 1988, we made it to state, and we got to come to Tulsa 
for the state tournament. The it Maybe was at center. the convention center oh, at convention the time. Center. It was before yeah. it went, they moved it to the Maybe Center. And I've got video of that game, and guess who's on the PA announcer <laughs> at the Tulsa Convention Center? Doc Blevins. And so all these many years later, we're, we're friends. One of, my, one of my favorite coaches I ever did games that he was in was A.D. Bertsey. Yep, my who coach. I, he went into the Hall of Fame here just, and then I guess uh, passed away Pass. shortly. Yep. Around, around that same time, but he, he was a great guy. Well, Andy, thanks for being with us at halftime, and uh, this this is just good. I mean, if you're a union person, this this has been a hard season so far, and tonight it's uh, it, it, it's so much better. So, so, so if you're listening on the radio, uh, you can you can go to the union app, uh, just search uh, union uh, union Redskins athletics, or you can go online to unionsportsnetwork.com, unionsportsnetwork.com to find it. Thanks for being with us, Thanks, Andy. Doc. We'll take a break.